Hi there. Uh, in this uh, series of lectures, uh, we'll see uh, what uh, the concept of a global snapshot is, uh, how do you calculate a global snapshot, and uh, the kinds of things that it can be used to detect. So here's an example of a global snapshot where uh, the uh, premiers uh, or the representatives of several nations uh, gathered in one place and uh, took a photograph. Uh, this was done in Paris in 2011. Uh, so this is the easy way of calculating the snapshot, uh, but that's not what we want to do. This problem really uh, becomes challenging when uh, the country's representatives are sitting in their respective capitals and they're exchanging messages, say, via emails uh, sent to each other. In that case, uh, in this very distributed system, calculating a global snapshot becomes very, very challenging. In fact, it's not even clear what a global snapshot even means when there are messages uh, in a transit among these uh, different processes in the, in the system. What I've described is in fact a distributed system of representatives. You can think of uh, this being analogous to our distributed system of processes, uh, which are also exchanging messages with each other. In the cloud, for instance, uh, you might have an application or service that is running on multiple servers. The servers are handling concurrent events and interacting with each other via messages. And the ability to obtain a global photograph or a global snapshot of the system is really useful for detecting many kinds of properties. You might want to checkpoint the system uh, so that uh, the entire distributed computation is checkpointed across multiple processes so that if you have a failure, then you can restart from the latest checkpoint. You might want to garbage collect objects. For instance, you might want to detect objects uh, that don't have any other objects or servers pointing to them so that these can be garbage collected. These are orphan objects. You might want to de uh, detect deadlocks um, in uh, database transaction systems. You might want to detect a termination of computation in at-home applications like Folding at Home uh, or SETI at Home, which some of you might be familiar with, or in uh, batch computations that might be running in uh, the cloud. But what is a global snapshot? So a global snapshot or a global state consists of an individual state for each process in the distributed system, along with a state for each of the communication channels in uh, the distributed system. Essentially, we want to calculate uh, or capture the instantaneous state of each process in the system and also the instantaneous state of each of uh, the uh, channels in the system. When I say a channel, I mean a point-to-point -point channel that goes from one process PI to another process PJ. So uh, one uh, obvious solution to this is to synchronize the clocks of all the processes using one of the well-known synchronization algorithms, uh, which we have discussed elsewhere in the course. Um, and then uh, fix a time t at which all the processes record uh, their own states. The issues with this are one that uh, time synchronization always uh, is error prone uh, with the error being a function of the round trip time uh, and or the message latencies in the network. You really don't want your banker to inform you that hey we had a one millisecond clock skew among our uh, servers and this resulted in us losing your uh, entire bank balance and so we don't know we are, your bank balance is zero. Uh, also, this algorithm does not record the state of the messages in the channels themselves. Uh, thankfully, uh, causality comes to our rescue again. Uh, we don't really need time synchronization here. We can again uh, make do with causality. What do I mean by causality? So let's see an example of a system moving from one global state to another or one global, global snapshot to another via a series of causal steps. In this system, I have two processes only, PI and PJ with two channels going each way. Uh, CIJ goes from PI to PJ and CJI goes from PJ to PI. Uh, so uh, here is an example of a global snapshot. We call this global snapshot zero of the system where PI's state has $1,000 and 100 iPhones and PJ state has $600 and 50 Android phones. The states of the channels CIJ and CJI are both empty. Uh, these four put together uh, are, comprise the global snapshot zero. Now, an event might happen in the system. For instance, uh, PI might send $299 and an order for one Android phone over to PJ. This changes uh, the state of uh, PI. It also changes the state of the channel CIJ, which now has a message in transit. So uh, with this one event happening in the system, uh, uh, because so, uh, somewhere in the system some state uh, has changed, the entire global snapshot has also changed. Okay, so we call this new snapshot as a global snapshot number one. Next, another event might happen in the system, which might be the fact that PJ might send an order for an iPhone along with $499 to PI. This results in the balance at PJ going down to $101 and also uh, the state of channel CJI changing um, uh, to have one message on it. So once again, this changes the state of the entire system. So this is global snapshot number two. 
Uh, then uh, the message from PJ is received at PI. Uh, the state of the channel CJI becomes empty now. PI's balance goes up. It has an outstanding order of one iPhone. And so the state of channel PI also changes. This is a third global snapshot of the system. In moving from one global snapshot to the next, what you're seeing is that an event happened somewhere in the system. And uh, this is a, a, a series of causal events um, uh, in the system. Nowhere here uh, in the snapshots are we talking about time at all or physical time at all. Uh, next, what happens is that uh, PI sends the iPhone uh, order over to the channels, uh, to uh, PJ, and this is sent on channel CIJ. The channels are ordered FIFO, which is first in, first out, which means that CIJ will deliver the first message sent on it first, and later messages will be delivered afterwards. Uh, but in any case, here the state of channel PI change, uh, the state of the channel CIJ changes because it has one extra message which it has to deliver now. And the state of PI is also changed because it's now fulfilled its outstanding order. And so this is another global snapshot number four in the system. The Android uh, order is received from PI at PJ. Uh, PJ's balance goes up and it has the outstanding Android order. And then uh, the iPhone also is received at uh, PJ. And both of these result in two different global snapshots. And the system continues like this, moving from one global snapshot to the next via a series of events. Essentially, these are causal uh, paths that global snapshots uh, move uh, through. So whenever an event happens anywhere in the system, whether a process receives a message, a process sends a message, a process takes a step, one event is enough for the entire global state to change because the global state captures everything in the system. Um, and so the state to state movement obeys causality. Uh, next lecture, we'll see uh, uh, um, an algorithm to actually calculate this global snapshot uh, uh, in, uh, concurrently with the application still uh, running. Okay, that's called the Chandi Lamport or the global snapshot algorithm.